Howdy gang, this is Jerry, and today I'm going to do another maintenance video for my Arma Granite Mega 4x4. <clears throat> a video I did last week, did one where I was showing how to replace this guy right here. This is the spur gear, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, a little bit worse for wear. It's gone. And the reason why this uh, spur gear is uh, taking such a beating is this motor right back here. I did a motor swap for this uh, BLX 185 motor. This is the motor Arma puts in their 8th scale uh, Cratons and uh, the Typhon, these 60 and 70 mile an hour 8th scale trucks. And I put it in this little granite and the spur gear didn't like that. Just uh, Here's the motor it comes with. That uh, significantly smaller plus it's brushed. So, you know, this, and as brushed motors go, this is a 550 size 12 turn. So this, as brushed motors go, this is a kind of a powerful motor. But when you start comparing uh, the brushed motors to modern brushless, it's just a big, big difference in power. And so I replaced that spur gear and then the next thing to let go, and there was a running video up on my channel also about this one, at this diff input, uh, let go on camera even. So today's mod is going to be using this little guy here to fix that broken diff. And so what this is, I've got the package. It's a wheel axle, AR310784. This is the wheel axle replacement axle for the Mega 4x4 platform. And uh, from the instructions I've seen on Facebook and on uh, forums and such, this ought to be a pretty easy mod. So I figured I'd just try to do this on video so that way if somebody is a little, maybe a little bit timid about cutting into stuff, uh, hopefully this will come off fairly easy. Um, so I'm gonna start off with the diff and the power module out of the truck. I'm not showing this on video because Arma has a, some very good videos for a, a maintenance series for how to do some teardown on the trucks. And so I will do a link in the video down to that. But basically the way they, this thing is assembled, you just uh, take three or four screws out of the bottom of the chassis and then there's this little red clip, I've got it out of the truck over here, that is um, the drive shaft runs right here above it. So you pop the drive shaft out, you do undo those three or four screws, you pop this guy out, and this actually sits in the truck here. So you pop this guy out, and then you can pull the motor module back, and then the bulkhead clamshells open, and you can just pull the diff out. It's it's really cool how they've built uh, the this rear bulkhead and everything. But I'm going to start here because now you've got this diff in the yoke assembly, and how do you get that apart? And uh, I have not seen anything online about it, so this is what we're going to try to go over today, okay? Okay, so on with the disassembly. The first thing I'm going to do here is just kind of as a maintenance side, on the power module, there's the other end of the diff input. It's still stuck in here. And this molded in piece has that little hole in the middle, so I'm just going to use just like a wood screw and just by hand just kind of twist it a little bit till it kind of bites and then that just slides right out and so there's the broken off end of the diff input and uh, this I believe this piece here will basically be trash but let me just set that aside now for the diff itself how do you get this little yoke assembly apart well there's two screws here there's a one is up here and then you flip it around and there's one in there and you can take those apart, but then you still can't get it apart without taking the drive shafts apart. And that's kind of where it gets interesting. Is how do you get the drive shaft apart? Now, if you hold this up to the camera, you can see down in there, there is a hex screw. But how do you get to that? And then as I was turning it a little while ago, I've already taken these off and put them back on. But you can see that cross pin has a hole in it. And I said, oh, well, look at that. There's a hole in there, and if I line all that up, I wonder if I can get the camera to see it. Maybe not. But I can take my 2 millimeter hex and run it all the way through there and grab that nut. Now the problem is, how do you hold that sucker still? Is it That nut is pretty tight in there, factory. And so what I did was I came with a second Allen wrench. This is a 1.5. You need one that's kind of thin, and I just slid it through that U-joint, just like that. And now it's very easy for me to unscrew 
that nut, that, that screw that captures it on. And with that screw loose, pops right off. And then that screw is captured in there. So I don't believe you really have to worry about it falling out. But even so, I wouldn't uh, tempt fate too much. But now we have one half of the uh, axle off. We can take this next screw off. And one screw over here off. There we go. And now this yoke will just clamshell apart in two pieces. There we go. We got the diff in one half. And here is the diff pinion here. And look at this guy. This is a monster of a diff pinion. Um, hang on, let me pull out my spare parts here. Just kind of a comparison. I've got a diff pinion from my crate in here. Actually, here's an entire ring and pinion from my crate. Spare parts box was in reach, thankfully. And just look at the size difference here. So, yeah, this Mega has plastic diffs. But, man, that is a monstrous gear for a 10th scale truck. So, yeah, they, they designed it out of plastic, but um, it's, uh, it's, it's a monster. These teeth are huge on this guy. And then the actual ring gear, I mean, look, look at the difference there in the size of this. Again, this is from my Creighton. And uh, this this one, actually, I take that back. This is from the Typhon, not a Creighton. These are, this is the straight diff set. But either way, it's still basically the same size as the Creighton. And, uh, I mean, look, that's a... Anyways, let's get on with this. So, what we want to do here is, you can see this guy's hollow on that end and has a hole through the middle. I'm going to pop one of those bearings off. The second bearing on mine is wedged on really tight, but I don't think we actually need to take that bearing off because the location we want to cross drill this is essentially where this bearing rides. So it'll be kind of in, in that realm. So that second bearing is on there really, really tight. Now this first bearing is on there tight. I'm going to stuck it on kind of crooked a little bit. So, let's see what we need to drill this out. So, we want this guy to fit in there like so. And so, we need to drill it out with this size. And I've already done some measurements, and it is about a quarter inch, uh, just a hair smaller than a quarter inch. So, I think if we use a quarter inch drill bit to bore out this hole, it'll be about the right size. So, let me hit the pause button, and I'll get my drill motor. Okay, so I've got my quarter inch bit and my drill motor and I've got a ginormous pair of channel locks here. And as I'm sitting here contemplating this, I'm thinking maybe I ought to pre-drill this with maybe a, just a slightly smaller than quarter inch and then I'll drill it with a maybe with an eighth inch bit and then I'll step up to the quarter inch. So let me let me do that. I'm kind of brainstorming this as I go. So let's, let's... Okay, so I got my eighth inch drill bit now. So I'm gonna just use the existing hole as a pilot hole and just kind of not use too much pressure and it went right through real quick and easy change to my quarter inch bit now i'm hoping that by kind of stepping up through these it won't uh it'll help keep it all nicely centered let's go nice and slow with the quarter inch bit now let's go to slow speed here This bit is awfully dull. Too much cutting sheetrock. Let's see if I have a better quarter inch bit. Well, it looks like that's my only bit, so let me just do a little bit more step up. So I've got a 3 sixteenths here. I'm just going like to just do just like I did before. Just kind of... Whoop. Come on, pop off there. There we go. And then now that a quarter doesn't have to bite so much, maybe that dull bit will do a little bit better. Also got a 15 64ths 
that's never been used before so I might use that one even if it still doesn't want to bite through well but this is the fun of doing this live on video right okay let's see if this quarter inch will go now man that is a dull drill bit oh my goodness it just doesn't want to go That one cut too deep too fast. Like I said, this is the fun of doing this stuff live. That you kind of come up with these little issues, but they're really not too big an issue in the long run. Stuff you got to work through. Okay, so that was. One sixty-fourth smaller than what I think I'll need, but let me just check it just in case. Who knows? Maybe it'll go. Yeah, still a little tight, so I'm gonna have to try that dull quarter-inch bit one more time. Okay, one more shot for good luck, right? And it is not doing it. There we go. And it's cutting a little bit. Okay. There we go. Just slides right in. And so now the only thing left to do is to drill the cross pin for that. So let me go figure out which drill bit I need for that little hole and uh, there it is right there let me go figure out what uh, pin i need and where i'm going to have to drill that hole and i'll be <clears throat> okay so back to this now the diff pin here i fabricated the diff the uh, excuse me not the diff pin but the cross pin this pin came out of my parts box um it's either a diff cross pin from my creighton diff or it might be one of the uh, hex cross pins again from the Creighton or the Typhon one of those two I'm not sure which it started out life but I cut it down to just I think it's just a hair under 10 millimeters long now so that is just a barely a hair under 10 millimeters long and it's the right diameter to fit right through there I'm sure maybe some of y'all are wondering okay what's the diameter let's just check real quick uh 2.4 call it two and a half millimeters So there's the diff cross pin there, and it needs to be able to fit under one of these bearings. And so when I first test fit it, it was a little too long, and so I had to take it to pol my polisher over there and just barely grind a little bit off the ends. And so there we go. So that's the cross pin. And when I measure this guy, the pinhole to the center of the pinhole to the edge of the teeth there, it ends up being about, I don't know, put it here where I can see about seven millimeters however if i can find the little stub where's my little broke stub here okay when we look at the little broken off piece look how long it is so i don't know that i want it to be sticking out as far as the old one but i want to give it an extra millimeter or two so even though that's seven millimeters back to the center of the the hole i'm, I'm thinking maybe I'll cut my hole at about six millimeters, maybe. Let's see if I do it at five millimeters. So I want I want this little stub here to get a nice deep insertion. So if I go five millimeters in from that face, that would put me right about there. Which that little mark there that I made would end up being kind of between the two pins, I bet. Where's my bearings? Uh, I don't want to put the bearings on all the way. They're too hard to take on and off. Mm. Let me mark, score that mark a little bit better.
Okay, so there's my little mark. Okay, I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to slip those bearings on and make sure that that pin will actually be captured underneath a bearing. We need that pin under a bearing to keep it from flying out while we're driving. Okay, so I have both the bearings on here now, and I kind of test fitted it into the outdrive housing here to make sure the bearings are spaced the way they're supposed to be spaced. And so that five millimeter measurement here, the edge of the bearing is essentially at the end of the shaft here. That's a four millimeter wide bearing. So that shaft would be just barely almost captured, almost exactly in the middle. It might be kind of partially captured. Oh, um, I gotta think about this. So do I want it to be partially captured or all the way captured? Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and do it at this five millimeters. I don't want to get the extension here too fur too much further out. Let's just see, because that's there. Yeah, I want this guy to be out a little bit like that. Kind of compare the distance here so you can kind of see what I'm trying to get at. I want a little bit of a neck there. So how far... like about two and a half millimeter gap there hmm I'm thinking as we're going here you know y'all thought this was going to be a smooth video here okay so do some mental math let me take this all apart and get, do some math and figure out exactly where I want to hang this okay so after taking that guy on and off a couple of times I think that place where I put that mark there that was you can barely see that little score line there that was five millimeters in so I think that's where I'm going to go ahead and cut that, cut the hole. But one other little point here is I'm going to have to order some more bearings. Because these guys, this, I keep taking this bearing on and off off camera because that bearing is a bit of a pain to get on and off there. It's such an incredibly tight fit. If you look at that bearing there, you can see these three marks on the auto race here and there and there. That's from this, trying to get a screwdriver under the bearing and twist and pry to get it up because this sucker fits so tight on the shaft so monday morning bright and early i'm gonna have to put in an order from avid and this what does this look like about a 10 by 15 by 4 i'm guessing so 10 by 15 by 4 bearings i'm gonna have to go ahead and order me a couple of those um that last time i took it here's the retaining clip for the shield so that shield will probably come out of here in just a minute here if i tap it really good um or maybe it'll just wait until I get everything reinstalled. But then on the other hand, this bearing is deep in the transmission. It can probably live without shields and might not ever be a problem. But anyways, so I've got the, the output shaft just kind of on this screwdriver. I mean on this drill bit just to kind of make it easier to hold for now. But let's go ahead and drill this hole. Um, so I've got this pin. It's a 2.5 millimeter pin. The drill bit I'm using is a... I think it's a 330 seconds, which measured out in millimeters ends up being a like 2.7 millimeters. Let's see here, real quick here. Yeah, 2.7. So it's just the hole will be a little bit bigger than the pin, which is about ideal. So let's go ahead and I've got my mark on here, which I probably can't see it very well on camera. I can barely even see it in person. Let's see if I can go ahead and drill this guy. Woo, walking all over. So this will be fun. So let me kind of score the plastic here a little bit. Right there is where I want it to start. I'll use my X-Acto knife to get a nice little starting point going here. Something that the drill bit can grab onto. There we go. This, and I'm going to instead of holding it on that drill bit, go back to holding it with the pliers. You kind of got to be careful holding it with the pliers because this is a composite gear. It is plastic, and I don't want to bugger up those teeth any more than I absolutely have to. So let's get this guy situated here. Now that I've got it started, 
with the exacto knife it's cutting nice and smooth oh halfway through all right now that it's halfway through stop and just kind of verify that i'm getting square in all directions let it ream that hole a little bit so you want that pin as close to square as you can get it through there that looks pretty good I'm just using my pliers as a nice little base here. Let's get it the other way to the other half of it. Just kind of taking my time, making sure I get it nice and square. There we go. That's kind of what I figured it was bound up on the wrench. Okay. So we got a hole in it. All right. Let's clean this guy up here a little bit. So no, that bearing is not going to want to fit over it if there's any extra little bit of booga booga on there. Pin fits smoothly in there now. It's the test. Will it all line up? There's the hole right there. Slide the pin in. Gotta wiggle it and jiggle it and get everything to line up the way it's supposed to. Come on, get in there, you. Still sitting up just a little bit proud. That bearing's not going to go over it unless I can get it to squish down the way it's supposed to. I probably would have done myself a favor if I would have cut that pin just another fraction of a millimeter shorter okay so you can see my holes didn't exactly line up perfectly and it didn't end up with much of as much of a neck there as what I was hoping I was really hoping it would stick out a little bit more but there it is Ultimate test. Will this? No, it won't fit over my bearing. My shaft is still sitting out a little bit proud. <clears throat> okay, well, I might have to punch that pin out and take it over to my sanding wheel and just shave it down just a little bit more. So let me go do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I think we're basically done with this project now. I did a lot of fiddling with it off camera, and one thing I found out, as you can see, I've got a extra set of holes um this hole here is the one that i drilled first on camera and once i got everything completely assembled the pin lined it exactly between the two bearings so i remeasured the hole I, I took the bearing and i uh got it in the correct position and this is probably the way i should have measured it the first time i put the bearing in the correct position and i got my exacto knife and i just scored right along the base of the bearing and then I use that for my measurement. So now that pin is exactly captured under that bearing. So that's great. Got a little bit of extension there. Um, I did some test fitting and it all looks like it's going to fit beautifully on here. Um, <clears throat> kind of just snap. Let me snap these couple of pieces here together real quick. and then that will fit on the end of there just fine and so that is how this we're going to call this project done and uh, now i just got to reassemble the two screws here to put this back together um, the slider rejoint screw that back on and then drop it back in the truck and my uh mega uh 
granite will be ready to run again and uh, hopefully now I've got the driveline suitably uh, reinforced that that uh, BLX 185 motor will uh, will actually be able to use it again and be able to cruise on it so there we go there's the HD diff input option complete so uh, anyways I'm done with this I'll uh, it'll be probably a couple of days before I can actually get around to running the truck though so I'm going to call this one project done. If you have any questions or comments, post them up in uh, the comments down here or over on Arma Forum or in the Facebook forums or wherever, and I'll uh, answer them when I can. Okay? Thanks, y'all. Bye-bye.